Hello, John Warner. Thank you for organizing such a wonderful augmented reality conference. And hello to all my fellow MIT alum. My name is Steve Mann, and this is the world's first wearable augmented reality computer, that, which I built in my childhood back in the 1970s. And it has antenna terminals. I can connect different things up to it, pick up different signals. It allowed me to pick up television signals and radio waves and sound waves and so on and to display those as an augmented reality overlay through persistence of exposure. So I would wave this light stick back and forth and these lights are connected to here. There's 35 lights in five groups of seven connected by 12 wires. And it allowed me to create augmented realities and present this to audiences of hundreds of people who could see this all at the same time without any special eyeglasses or any other special apparatus. And so the electric lights that were there, there are 35 of them, I've just here got one electric light connected to this apparatus. And as I turn down the bias, I can, the gain has no effect here unless I put a little bit of bias on it. And so there's a bias control that allows me to put a little small amount of, of bias. I can increase it or decrease it. And say if I've set it to about there, kind of a moderate amount of bias. I've got a surveillance camera here. And when I come in front of the field of view of the surveillance camera, the lamp glows more brilliantly. And when I go outside of its field of view, the lamp extinguishes. Again, if I come into the field of view, the lamp comes on and it goes off. So as I swing this lamp back and forth, up and down like this, in a sense it paints out through persistence of exposure, if I wave that bulb around in a dark room, a pattern of what the camera can see. And if I block it with my hand, if I've got the light glowing and I stick my hand in there, it extinguishes the light. And if I come up above my hand, it goes back on and then it goes off because it's outside of the field of view of the camera. Come back on again, go off again. Underneath my hand it comes back on again and then goes off again when it comes outside of the field of view of the camera again. So you can see here uh, I've got an augmented reality overlay. And I call this phenomenological augmented reality or phenomenal augmented reality, reality of real physical phenomena, or I just call it real augmented reality. Uh, as an art form, in some sense I was a cyborg performance artist waving this thing around, showing people in my childhood all kinds of different phenomenology. And this is some uh, augmented reality art. So in this piece here, this piece is called burner phone, and there's a cordless phone here transmitting at 5.8 gigahertz, and the wavelength is about 5.6 centimeters, and you can see these waves here are about 5.6 centimeters apart. And the waves get they're stronger closer to the phone and they get weaker further away. And they, of course, the increase without bound is in, for that particular gain setting. So it's an artistic decision of where to begin that wave. You'll see here there's an anomaly. Right here it gets a little bit weaker and then it gets stronger again. Why does that happen? Well, these are this is from reflections in the room. There's multiple reflections of these waves off the walls in the room and creating constructive and destructive interference. And there's a various uh, pattern to the room. So this particular art piece is only valid in the room in which it was recorded. If it's moved to a new location, you almost have to make a new one so that it's valid in the new location. Here's another piece, another piece of art, and this one is from a phone that transmits at a lower frequency, and you can see the wavelength is longer. And these waves are not just a simulation or representation of the phenomenology, but these are the actual waves from the phone And in that sense, these waves represent an actual real augmented reality. Here's another example of real augmented reality here. I've got this uh, sound wave cut into this piece of wood here, and the tool path is carved into the piece of wood. The speaker on the ceiling uh, is closer to this part here so that this is where the sound wave is stronger and then as I come further away it gets weaker and weaker in amplitude.
And you can see also there's multiple harmonics visible. This is an A440 with a wavelength of about 30 inches or so, and so it just repeats uh, again, but you can see that you see multiple harmonics, and this lock and amplifier, in a sense, this uh, apparatus that I invented and built is in a form of lock and amplifier, a special kind of lock and amplifier that provides all the harmonics of the signal at equal amplitude. So I'm a radio engineer, I build things, I create things, and I want to understand and see the world around me. So this is my smartphone. Uh, one of the things that I build is, is smartphones, and, and uh, this phone here, I want to be able to see it and understand the waves from it. So this is, uh, I have here the, the waves, and, and if I move this back and forth, you can actually see these waves here. And you can see that as I get closer to the smartphone, the waves are stronger, and as I get further away, they're weaker. So now I can actually see that wave in real time coming from this smartphone. And now, if I go through a book here, for example, a nice thick book I put in front of the smartphone and hold it like this, you can see that the wave is a little bit weaker. And if I put a big stack of papers in front of that book, a nice big envelope that I received, and move that, you can see that it decreases the amplitude of the signal somewhat. But what really kills the amplitude is if I grab it, put my fingers over it, put my hand over it, look at that, there's almost nothing gets through, very little gets through my hand. The hand attenuates extremely the wave. So you can imagine if I'm trying to talk on the cell phone like this and I'm holding it like this, of course nobody can hear me because uh, the, and even though the transmitter goes to full power, it's just running down my battery and heating up my brain but not getting the signal out. But you know, smart people hold their phone like this rather than like this. If you hold it like this, it lets the waves come out. The wave, the transmitter can get by with very little power and allows you to actually see, to hear the conversation without using too much battery power. Your batteries last longer and so by understanding radio waves we can understand how we should hold our phones, for example. But more other applications, if I'm a, a microwave engineer and I'm looking at microwave ovens rolling down the assembly line, I can actually see the microwaves leaking out around the seal and see which ovens are leaking and which ones are not. As, as a sound engineer, I can look out at an orchestra and see the sound waves from all the instruments, and I can see which instruments are behaving erratically. I can look at various sound producing devices like loudspeakers and evaluate them and compare their performance. So this is very useful, and this doesn't require any special kind of eyewear, but if with the special eyeglasses we can see different things very nicely. This is the Pi Tap, the Raspberry Pi iTap. This is an open source iTap that anybody can build. Just come to our Instructables website. We have lots of Instructables at Instructables.com on how to build augmented reality. So you can look at this and see and understand the world and build these eyeglasses yourself. This is the Mind Mesh. Uh, one of the things I really like doing is meeting up with smart people. Uh, a lot of my students are super geniuses. Uh, Chris Amini, uh, the CTO of Interaxon, we founded a company called Interaxon. Uh, James Fung, and Chris Amini, and myself and Ariel, and we made this, this company that makes brain sensing headbands which are now available in Best Buy stores all across North America. This is a mind mesh. This particular device has 64 electrodes and we're building other ones with 65,536 electrodes and some with um, an essentially unlimited number of electrodes as a fractal kind of neural network based uh, system. I really enjoy connecting with super smart people who like to have fun. I mean the main thing is to have fun so I created this thing called Humanistic Intelligence Foundation and uh, I, I founded this uh, in California and I want to meet really smart people who like to build things and create things and so 
uh, join us here at Humanistic Intelligence Foundation. We're interested in solving uh, humanity's greatest problems. We're interested in making the world a better place through humanistic intelligence, human in the loop intelligence. Humanistic intelligence is intelligence that arises by having the feedback, human in the feedback loop of the computational process. And you know, read our paper that Marvin Minsky, Ray Kurzweil, and I wrote about Society of Intelligent Valence. And join our group. Uh, I, I'd like to see very many people uh, interested and inspired and help make the world a better place. Thank you so much.